Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, I know it's been a minute since I uploaded. Your girl was down with the sickness. Quite literally. For two weeks, I was like, I don't wanna be here. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Down with the sickness. But now that I'm feeling better, it's time for yet again another evolution. And this time we'll be tackling Edgy Boy Umbreon, who happens to be my favorite. So let's get started. Hi. You should also subscribe and like and comment if you happen to like this video and my stuff. Okay, bye. Like my stuff, please. I think of you. To get started, we're hopping into some 3D sculpting. I thought it would be fun to essentially evolve Eevee's head into Umbreon and had nothing to do with me wanting to make my life a little easier and do less work. So I tweak the features, make the eyes more angular and generally make the shape more slender. I definitely gave Umbreon a I'm a tough boy pout and I'm all here for it. You should have respected my authority. With Umbreon's basic shape in, it's time to refine the details. First with adding the eyes back in and immediately making them brand to creepy out for the rest of this section. For the ears, I considered going realistic and hollowing out whatever these are, but it looks too far from his design and let's be real, my realistic is semi-realistic stylized at best, so I left them like the original. With a quick color test to see how it'll look, it's time to bring this boy into the real world. I drop him into my printer software, click some buttons, and watch it preview what the printer does cause I honestly think it's cool, and then I head on over and pray nothing fails. we can get some good puppy puppies. And here is the finished print that actually printed successfully on try one. With the head, uh, eyeless, it's time to give him sight. The jump scare. <laughs> So we got, we got, we got, we got these boys. Just freaking googly eyed McGee over here, and then my spirits are this size, and then like normal art dolls are probably like this size, and there's just massive compared. But there is a gap that I gotta fix. It's not like a huge gap, but it's still a gap. 
So I begin shaving the resin away with a Dremel to get rid of a gap that's not like a huge gap, but still a gap. Then it was time to draw out the actual eye with my trusted, I don't drop constantly, iPad. Going with a good deep old red. Before I attach the glass to the colored iris, I sand it first for better adhesion. A little dab of UV resin as some glue, and just plop the eye down. Then I have blasted with the sun. And here he is with the eyes installed. I tried to do this on camera, but I was off frame the entire time. Sorry. Moving on, it's time for some ASMR armature time. With the body done, it's time to attach the resin pieces. But first... A little happy guy? Yeah. Boop. Oh. Oh, yes. It's perfect. This is the ceremony mm -hmm. I need to get me through this day. I've peaked in my art career. With that picture of that one kid trying to fix that Barbie doll. They're the same picture. I use hot glue to fill the cavities I sculpted earlier and hold the armature in place until it cools. I repeat these steps for the ears and the paws. With everything attached, it's time to move on to buddy building. And for that, it's quilt batting's time to shine. It comes in a giant roll that I cut into many, many strips. I then wrap it around the skeletal frame over and over to essentially build up the muscle layer. Making sure not to go too beefy though, to account for the thick knots of the faux fur that I'm gonna be adding later. But like I always say, like I always say, if you want chunk 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 boy, you go and you get chunk 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 boy. If you want thin 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 boy, you go and you get thin 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 boy, okay? We support all body shapes and sizes here. With the batting finished, usually sewing is next, but first we need to get fancy with some lighting for his markings. If you thought I was soldering LEDs, you're at the wrong channel. Fairy lights coming in clutch. Though, in hindsight, I'm pretty sure it was the same amount of work, but in my head, it was worth it. For the eyes, I just bundled them all together to make it as bright as possible. I then made ring sets for his front and back legs. The battery packs will be hidden in his belly. I temporarily tack the lights in place until I can get the fur on just so they're not moving around and get misplaced. Now for the resin pieces, I had to dremel a channel so that the LEDs could sit flush with the pieces. Would it have been smarter to do this before we got to this point? Yes but I live life with risks. And I just don't consider thinking the plans through out all the way. I then tag those in place as well. You're wondering, there are six battery packs in him. It would have just been easy to solder, but hey, it works and he looks good. So on to sewing. For once, we're not using white fluff. It's time for the dark stuff. 
As always, I'm not the channel to come to for sewing advice. I definitely go to Enchantarium or something because I'm not competent in skill or words to explain. But really, I'm just making wonky, misshapen tubes and jigsawing all the pieces together until it looks like it'll work. And then I just sew it all together. Sure, there's logic behind what I do, but basically it's just the go for it method, let's be real. Once I get to the belly, I add a Velcro strip so I could have access to the LED to turn everything on and to change the batteries. As long as you keep the fur out of the way, this stuff holds together strongly. Almost too strong, it's kind of a pain to take apart. For the markings, it makes sense to go with a yellow fur, right? Well, I found an issue with it. The LEDs aren't as bright underneath, and even though it's hard to see on camera, it glowed orange, which isn't what we want. So instead, I'm bringing the white fluff back. It dispersed the light better, and if I only color the top layer, it should give a good effect, so I'm just gonna go with that. With the body fluffed, it's time to fluff the head as well. I paint everything black first, so in the totally unlikely chance I miss a spot when furring, you won't see just gray peeking through. Before starting, I also trim and glue the fur from the body. And then I start attaching fur to the face using longest pieces of the fur at the back and tiny itty bitty trimmings on the snoot. And now I present to you the rare long haired Umbreon. But seriously, now it's time to trim the floofiness so you can actually see the markings. For that, I use a pet shaver so I can play pretend groomer. But really, this tool glides through the fur and cuts the bulk fur off so evenly and smoothly, it's a real time saver. I didn't use it too much this time though, as I only really needed shaping of the rings and markings for the most part. The one drawback is it can't trim small legs very well, so I go in and refine their shape with scissors. I also use the scissors to cut the markings to make them nice and sharp. Can you get that way old chunky leggy? I'm going to the bathroom! I'm going to the bathroom! You're messing me up! I'm going to the bathroom! <laughs> With him looking nice and snazzy from his haircut, it's time to give him some color. This is Airbrush 2.0 since I literally broke the last one in the video. Just gonna try my best to take care of him. Here comes Jerry again. He's also gonna try his best. My name is Jeff. No, everything's fine. This is a load of barnacles. I, everything I touch turns yellow. It's all yellow. <laughs> it's all over the airbrush. <laughs> A brand new airbrush? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Literally everywhere I looked turned yellow. Umbreon is nice and easy when it comes to airbrushing, except for all the yellow. Just a quick layer of yellow all over the white. Booty, 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 rocket everywhere, rocket everywhere, rocket everywhere. <laughs> Miss no booty. <laughs> you got, got thick butt. <laughs> Then 
all the leg markings get a black circle to complete the ring. I really didn't trust myself to sew that tiny of a circle, so airbrushing was the next best choice. And lastly, ending with the best part, the toe beans. I can't forget to paint them. I do them last, so they'll hopefully avoid getting scuffed, because that tends to happen a lot with me. I'm just very rough-handed with all my art dolls. God, that is just so cute. They're just so small. So little. So I would just squish them. With the final being painted, Embryon is done, and I agree the end result and the lights just take him up an extra notch. So let's check out that final montage. You can't see it but like his nose is here and I'm booping it. 